Okay, so um, moving on then. Uh, now we're going to start looking at like if I wanted to create the the lines, right, and build this thing off of just the structure itself, and then match the shell to that. Um, so that becomes a little bit more difficult, only because um, you're going to have to generate other circles using other geometry that may or may not be easy uh, to build. But you know, we'll play around with it a little bit and see what we can we can create. The easy part is actually creating the columns, though, right? Because the columns are just going to be based off of points that we've established on the circle. So um, I'm going to turn off this loft and start working on um, this instead. Um, so we've got the top curve and the bottom curve. Um, each one of these we're going to divide into a set of points. So this is pretty much what you were asking about a moment ago. Um, we want to make sure when we're doing an exercise like this that we always divide the curves by the same number of points. Otherwise, you're going to get like gaps in your um, diagrid and stuff. So um, let's put a slider on this for 0 is less than, oh, I don't know, uh, 50. Let's get pretty tight in there. So some, for me, it's 30. For you, it might be a little more. Um, I'm going to copy and paste that down, and we'll do that here as well. So I want you to really look at the data that we're building. Um, notice how as I slide this thing back and forth, do you see um, this one right here? It's always in the same location because that is the base, um, the start point of the circle. And they match from here straight down, right? This one is exactly the same, and it will stay there anytime I change this. There are a few ways we can change how we uh, manage this information. We can rotate the circle and then we physically move that point to another point or we can um, change the order of operations. And one is like the uh, order of operations on the list of points. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because if we have two coincident circles, right? Let's say there's one here and we want to um, have them sort of uh, engage each other in exactly the same sort of vertical orientation, which means if I'm looking at this this way and I want this to go down here, but I want this one to still be at this point, but go back up there, then I need to make sure that the, the circles are in their exact same orientation relative to one another, so I still have my base point in the right location, assuming they can be and they're not skewed. But um, if you don't understand what that means, you will in a moment. Um, so what we can do here is uh, take a line, and we can go from this set of points to that set of points. Right? That part's pretty easy. Um, we can, like I said, physically grab this thing. And if your gumball is oriented to the object, then you could very easily just rotate this thing a certain number of degrees in order to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. OK. But is that truly effective, right? So you want to look at, from the top, whether or not your geometry still is aligned. Because where, where I had it before was um, right here, I had these points were directly on top of each other. Those were my point zeros. Um, as I move them out of sync, um, I no longer have a point that is exactly on top of that. Maybe that matters, maybe it doesn't, but it is something that you need to be aware of. So if that's not what you want, um, the other option is to reorder or restructure the data. Um, so we can take uh, the top point list and we can move some of those points to the end. So let's go to um, set, uh, let's go to list, um, and we're going to split the list. And we can split it at a certain index. So I'm going to say 0 is less than, um, I don't know. We are, we're also using 50, so I'll use that. Um, and I'll plug that in here. And we'll plug in this uh, there. So what I want to point out, though, is that what's happening is um, copy and paste this here. OK, so right now we have no information being filtered out to the top, and all the information is being filtered out to the bottom. Um, that's fine. That's because I, I'm splitting the list at an index value of 0. So the second I split it at 1, then that list starts to populate. So notice how it said um, 
down here it says 17.149, 6.2, 70.4. As soon as I bump this up to 1, that says uh, 17.149, 6.2, 70.4. So it moves that into that list. Um, so if we want to reorganize this and take those first two or three or five um, indices, and move them to the back of the list, then we can remerge that list again and just change the order of the input. So let's go to um, set tree and go to merge. Um, I'm going to leave this information here so we can sort of follow it, but just reverse the order. So if we take A and put it behind and take B and put it up front, then we're going to get the same information, but the last two items, or the last five items, I mean, are going to be at the bottom of the list. So if I scroll all the way down, you're going to see 17.149, 6.2, and 70.4. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we, um, I, I take your silence as a yes. It makes sense. Um, so when we move back here uh, to our definition um, and we replace the line input, we just effectively did the same thing. However, our point zeros are still exactly on top of one another. That's these two right here. So we can keep this definition and start um, our form finding process the same way. We can still continue to tilt this. Um, and we can simply change the index value. And that's going to create um, sort of a more uh, accurate system. Okay, so that's just for one direction. We do have to um, provide the same system in both directions. So that's just going to be a product of, of reversing the list, right? So um, we can take uh, this item down here, copy and paste that. Well, yeah. No, we don't need to copy and paste it, actually. Um, we'll go to reverse list. So now we have uh, the point list that's going in the correct direction. Um, well, not correct, but it's going in the right-hand direction, like they're all kind of wrapping up the, the building going to our right when we're standing on the outside of it. Um, but then this one, when we plug that in, it's going to do the opposite. So we'll copy and paste this, and we'll plug this in in the bottom instead. Oh, did I screw that up? I think I did. We need to... Hang on, let me think about this for a moment. Hang on, I gotta think through the logic real quick. So let's go to display. We're gonna display um, these. All right, there we go. So it's going zero, one, and then the top one is going to go zero, one. So if they're going opposite directions, we actually want this to go that way. Hang on a moment. So I think what I did wrong was I needed to reverse both lists to get um, the opposite side. So let's do the same thing. Copy and paste this, but we're going to reverse this list may need to be the original list, but we'll see. So that was one option. We're going to put that in there. That's the same thing, because we reversed both, but they're going. Huh. So uh, let's see. We're, we have our original points. Let's go back a little bit. So I think... Um, they're still going in order, but we want the numbers to be shifted a certain amount. So let's see, we've got uh, put this in here. So zero's over there. So we're going from zero to zero, but we want to go from zero to something else back here, which is probably not five. Zero to zero. So we shifted it five. And if we're going to go back down the other side, we probably want to shift it another five. So that would make it ten. Does that seem about right? Let's try that. Um, 
Well, actually, we shifted it at 7, so let's go 14. Um, sorry, guys, this is going to look a little funny for a while, but let's go to, um, let's do another split list. Except this one is going to be double. Um, times two. Oops, x times two, I mean. X times two. Fourteen. Okay, let's try that. Hmm. What am I screwing up here? Hang on. Okay, so I think part of the issue is that we only reversed one list. Um, so that's why we're getting this like crossing in the middle. Mm -hmm. So um, let me try this out real fast. Um, we, let me get rid of this extra stuff. So this one is fine. This is the one we want to fix. So we have one list reversed. We have another list that we're reversing. So let's take a look at both of those lists together. So we have, now we have uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So they're at least going in the same direction. Um, so now we don't have that crossing. Okay, so that solved one part. Um, then we just need to reorganize the reverse list in the same fashion that we reorganized uh, the original. So we're going to take this split copy and paste that and we're going to put that here so in this case we're going to reverse this list which should there we go okay so no overlapping we have um, one system if you look kind of down here where it's or up top where it's a little clear uh, one system is going you know sort of leaning left the other system is leaning right so let me recap that up here on the board for you guys um, while I was struggling to figure it out. Um, so what I did was I looked at the relationship of the points here, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, to the points above, right? Like before I even reorder or reverse anything. So it was 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if I wanted 0 to match up with 1, 1 to match up with 2, and so on and so forth, going the right-hand direction, I needed it to go the opposite direction for the other system. So 0, right, 0 is your base point. When you get up to the second one, 0 starts off as your base point here. However, if you reverse the list, 4 becomes 0, 3 becomes 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, right? So when you reverse the list, going the opposite direction, you also need to reverse it down here. So now we're looking at this is going to be um, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 as well. So if we shift that up so that 0 connects to 1, right, then that's going to give us this. And then 0 connects to 4 and so on and so forth, all the way around the thing. So we reversed one list, and we forgot to reverse the other list. Okay. Um, so now that we have um, that, it's a pretty um, simple um, solution, sort of, kind of. Uh, you can loft the curves around the outside of the building um, if you want, but it's going to stop short. I think you can loft and close the loft or something. So let's give that a shot. Um, so surface, freeform loft, and then um, you have to also look at the loft options. So when you right click it and you go to loft options, you can check this box for closed loft and it should take all those curves that you're putting around the outside and, uh, and close them off. So this is one option. And that's what I was referring to is that um, that, that should be closing it. Loft options. Oh, I didn't check it. Uh, loft options, close loft, commit change. There you go. Okay. So now um, we don't have to really do anything else for this except change our key features. So we have a count of how many points and we have an index value of how far we want to modify it. So um, we can change the count to be less, which will tighten it up. Um, or we can change the index value of, of what, how many spaces removed we're going to operate. Okay. So um, I also want to point out that once you get to this point, right, the loft is one item. The lines are another item. 
Um, if you want to get your structure in there, all you have to do is go to freeform, um, go to, let's do like a quick pipe. Well, no, I'm not gonna complicate it with pipe variable for now. Um, but a pipe, we'll put that in there, put this in here, and we'll set a radius, zero is less than 2.00. There you go. What questions do you have? Anybody? No? Okay, well that's how you do it. Um, so, I mean, what's cool about me getting stuck here for a little bit in class is that you actually got to see me work through being stuck, right? So like, this is how I think through the problems. This is how I solve them. So you should be doing stuff like this as well when you get stuck. Does that make sense? Notice how, like, I hardly drew any lines. Most of it is numbers, right? Like, index values, index values around other diagrams I'm trying to construct, looking at the list of information itself, right? And then kind of remapping it all together, trying to figure out what, you know, where it went wrong. So that's the process. Thoughts, questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, yeah, the shade structures are actually a really great example of where the index, the indices become so, so critical.